Welcome back all you homo sapiens to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park and Planet Coaster. My name is Tyler Cedarwall and I am really sorry if I offended you with that opening, if I assumed your species. Um, I know not everybody watching this video is possibly a human, so I didn't mean to assume your species, but I am aware that some of you might be watching this video with your dog or cat around you, and I, I want to apologize to all the dogs and cats that are also possibly watching this video. You know what? That was, I shouldn't even open like that. Now I just feel bad for anybody watching this video that's not a homo sapien. Why would I do such a thing? Okay, I don't know what type of tangent I'm going on. But anyways, last episode on this series, we finished building the outside structure to this current sci-fi roller coaster that we've been working on for the past couple of episodes. And in this episode, we're going to continue decorating the interior of this laboratory. So right now, we are just decorating the walls and making the walls look more interesting than giant flat pieces of wall because that's all they are before you add anything to them and luckily they give you lots of different textures and pieces of scenery to put on your walls to really bring the life into them well I don't think walls can actually be brought to life but you know we just want to make it look way more interesting now I'm not really sure what these pieces are that I'm putting on the wall right now they look kind of like they're lockers slash vents I'm gonna imagine this is where we keep all the bodies that we do experiments on. And then I also, I staggered the pattern on them, because even though it's the same pattern over and over again, since I staggered it, it actually looks a lot cooler than if I just stacked them straight up. And I kind of like this like diagonal line that I created by doing this pattern. I could have extended it and made it go all the way to the wall, but I kind of liked having it end right there. It looks pretty unique. Now we're adding some trim to the corner of the room to make the corners look less blocky as well. That's one of my main goals is to make these rooms not look like giant rectangles and I think I think it all turned out really well in the long run. Now something I learned about while building this laboratory when it comes to placing scenery, well first off I learned a lot of things because I'm also experimenting with lots of new things while I build this park. But one thing I learned is that you can change the colors to most of the scenery items even the ones that you wouldn't expect to be able to change the colors on. So even though we're building this laboratory and using almost all of the sci-fi pieces that we have available to us, in future areas that we use these same scenery pieces, all we have to do is change the color of them, and it almost makes them seem like entirely new pieces of scenery. So we're definitely going to take advantage of that when we are building things later, so it doesn't seem like the sci-fi section of the theme park is super repetitious. Another way to bring variation to the limited amount of scenery is the lighting that you have available in this game. Now you guys saw me do some of the lighting when I made the plaza slash entrance to the park, and I really used the color lights to make the park seem more surreal and more beautiful during the nighttime. And you can definitely do that to the extreme in this game when it comes to just decorating the insides of your buildings. Now, one limitation to this game right now, and I'm not sure if they'll be fixing it in the future. The devs said they want to on the forums, but I'm not sure if they're going to ever be able to find a way to do this. And that is making it dark inside buildings during the daytime. Now, during the nighttime, all the lighting is fantastic, but during the daytime, for some reason, the building walls do not block sunlight. And this isn't terrible, because you can still have the immersion of a dark ride during the nighttime, so you just have to ride the ride during the nighttime to have the full immersion of the ride. But it still kind of sucks because it isn't as realistic as I would hope, but I can definitely get over that fact. There is still a way to make dark rides that work during the daytime though, and that's if you put them underground. Terrain will block light and make it dark inside your buildings if you build your buildings underground, which is definitely a possibility for certain types of rides. But you don't want to put every single ride in your park underground at the same time. But if I was to make a ride that I wanted it to be dark at all times, like say a Haunted Mansion ride, I would probably just build the Haunted Mansion part above ground, like the house, and then put lots of the actual mansion and rooms that the ride takes place in underground to really give it the real effect of being dark at all times. Now fortunately, lots of the rides that you build, even if you don't have the lighting during the daytime that you would normally want, they'll still be fun and look good. I just won't have the exact atmosphere and ambience that you originally built the ride to have. But it's really not a problem. They're fake people that ride these rides in the park, so their opinions don't ultimately matter. And then if you want to ride it in the dark, all you have to do is set it to nighttime, and you are good. Now, this room that we're decorating right now, this very, very tall room, is one of my favorite rooms in this laboratory, just because it just is so large. And I don't know why I love this room being so large, but I really just do. It just makes this laboratory seem so much more legitimate because 
I don't know, high-pitched ceilings or high-pitched roofs just make a room seem so much more legitimate because you know that they had to engineer that building to be even stronger to hold the roofs up that high to have stronger walls and that they just spent more money and materials to make high roofs. High roofs just resemble elegance and wealth and we want this laboratory to make it look like really rich scientists are doing their experiments here. But the downside is we have to put in a lot more decorations and think of a lot more things to fill up this wall space while still trying to keep a very original look to it. <laughs> Now I just mentioned engineering, and I think I mentioned this on the first episode of this series, but I'm currently going to school for an engineering major, and right now I'm taking my first physics class. It's a physics class that uses calculus, and I never realized how hard of a subject physics is. This is my first time ever taking a physics class, and it's already one of the most difficult classes I've ever taken. Pretty much all it is is a lot of word problems. You just have to take your math skills you've learned over the years and be able to apply them to word problems. And word problems have always been my number one issue. Before I go on about that, as you see those wall panels I just put down, that's where I learned you could change the colors of some of the scenery items. You see I made the walls black and then the little logos blue. With those color options, you can really add a variety to your scenery and make lots of your pieces look completely different. But yeah, back to my physics word problem problem that I'm having right now. Even though I'm really bad at word problems, I'm really happy that I'm finally being forced to do lots of word problems with my homework and with what I'm learning because it's actually giving purpose to all the math that I've learned over the years, which is very cool. I'm not going to lie. But I think one of the reasons I'm not very good at word problems is that when doing math homework, usually the word problems are the last problems on your homework assignment. The rest are all just making you learn the concepts. And when I did lots of my homework, I would usually do all of the regular homework problems, and then by the time I got to the last three or four word problems, I'm like, eh, I don't need to do these, I'll just lose a couple points, it's okay, I have a decent enough grade in the class. And I kind of regret doing that because now I'm doing word problems a lot, and I'm like, dang it, I'm not any good at these. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles, I guess. <laughs> And now we are finally decorating the last room on the ridden section of the coaster. There's still other rooms to decorate. We still have to decorate the room where you load into the cart, but I'm going to do that later. And then there's that very last room of the coaster that you go through before, at the, like the very end of the ride. There's like that small indoor section. We also have to decorate that too. But for this very last room, I'm trying to make it look really cool, yet kind of messy at the same time because this is where the ride starts going to hell. Um, so I'm trying to put lots of stuff all over the ground, and I'm going to add fire effects to it later. And right here, I kind of try to make the walls look a little bit less flat by adding some cylindrical pieces to them that stuck out. And I think that looked pretty cool. It definitely made it look a lot less flat, for sure. I don't know why I dislike flat things when I'm building. I guess most guys dislike flat boobs. I dislike flat walls. It's just... That's just how it works. I don't know if that's even a good analogy or not. And there was a comment I read that pointed out how cute these robots are, and I never realized how cute they are until I read that comment and then I noticed they're so adorable. The little lights in the front are those two little upward facing arrows that make that robot look super duper happy to be doing whatever they're doing. And they're just like little wallies. They're so adorbs. I guess I do shorten the word adorable to adorbs. And then there's also a few comments I wanted to talk about real fast regarding what I talked about last episode. I said that I um, really wanted to do a story mode playthrough of this game, but I'm not going to because my computer isn't the best. I did build my own computer uh, several months ago, but it has some old parts. My old roommate, Squill, he gave me some of the parts from his old computer he built a few years ago that he replaced. And so a few of the parts of my computer are fairly older, and my computer can't play this game on like really high graphics and record it at the same time and so I said I didn't want to do a story mode playthrough because my quality wouldn't be that great and lots of people said they would still watch it anyways and I fully understand that but at the same time if I were to do an actual legitimate playthrough of this game I would want to have better graphics and like be able to really show it off um so and I think by the time I get to a point where I want to do a story playthrough of this game I'll have the money to be able to upgrade my computer because I've been working a lot like during Christmas break I was working 65 hour weeks and I've, I I kind of saved up quite a bit of money got a lot of debts paid off 
So now I'm getting closer to being able to possibly upgrade my computer and replace the motherboard and processor and stuff like that. And I'd also like to do some streams of this game too whenever I get my computer upgraded. I don't want to do it now because this game doesn't look that great when I'm playing it, especially when I'm recording it. You can't really tell while I'm recording the game when it's being fast forwarded, but my frame rate isn't that great and it gets smoothed out when I speed up the footage, but like especially when I'm riding the rides, you can tell that my frame rate is kind of choppy and that's not really what I'm wanting to ha have when I'm trying to make a really good looking series of this game. But hey, look at this! We're finally decorating the launch tunnel, so we're almost done doing the main scenery for the cinematic part of this ride. Such a good feeling. I remember when I was building this ride, I just felt so good when I got to this point because it took a long time to decorate the inside sections of this laboratory, even though I had fun the whole entire time. While I'm playing this game, I'm usually listening to lots of really good music. Honestly, playing this game is just one of the number one things I like to do when I'm done with the day and want to relax and just like sit down, maybe just drink a beer or whatnot. And now let's go ahead and ride our ride and kind of compare what's changed since we rode this ride before we added any scenery to this. It's like a completely different ride now. And I also like to ride the ride every once in a while just to see things that I need to fix that I might not have noticed while I was building. Like for example, we needed to raise that door that we first went through. It was a little bit too low, but everything's looking nice so far. It'll look way better once the lighting has been put in place, which we're going to be doing that next, and I'm super excited about that. And this will be way cooler too once we have all of the effects added and make everything set on fire. And here is our lunch tunnel. Our lunch tunnel? <laughs> I meant to say launch tunnel. My bad. You'll also notice some subtle differences compared to the first time we rode this ride. I don't th I think I might have cut it out of the footage, but I did adjust the track and some of the issues that we had with it the first time. There's still a couple issues that I had to fix after this ride, but it's a little bit better. Like, I still haven't fixed the banking on those loops. But yeah, this ride is way more legitimate with all of these buildings around it. And it's still just going to get better and better. I still think there's two more full episodes of building just this ride on this series. So, there's a lot of changes to be made. Alright, so a few more things to add before we add the lighting. I went ahead and adjusted that door. And right here I kept this shot in because I thought it looked really cool just to like quickly <laughs> go through the whole entire laboratory. But before we had the lighting I added, a, I added a few extra things just to fill up some spaces that I thought needed to be filled. I really like these air conditioning units. I think they're a really nice touch. And these robotic arms also just look super cool in my opinion. And now it is finally time to turn off the lights because everything is cooler in the dark. And the first thing you'll notice is those panels with the LEDs on them they just pop they're nice they're lights but they're also lights that don't really illuminate things they're just kind of lit panels and i think it just really looks super duper cool now my first goal was just to light up the room as well as i could i went ahead and add decorative lighting first but i felt like the very first necessity was to make sure everything was lit up and these lights really also add a nice amount of depth to the ride just having these little light arms sticking out of the walls it looks really lit, as the kids say nowadays. Am I right? Am I right? Up top! Yes, I just gave myself a high five for making a joke. I need some validation somewhere. Alright, so now that I added a decent amount of lighting to the walls, now I put these spotlights on lots of different items of scenery. And I'm going to set them to different colors. And what we're going to do with these is really just add some mood to the items. Uh, just adding some green lights, some blue lights, some red light, green light to the items. It just really makes them pop in different ways. I like that word, pop. I like making things pop. Some snap, crackle, pop. Oh yeah, I like to drink some pop. Balloons go soda when you poke them with a knife. I'm pretty sure pop and soda, they're interchangeable words. It doesn't matter on the context. Like if you really wanted to, you could say, yeah, I listen to soda music a lot. I really pay attention to soda culture. Not pop culture, soda culture. It's, the, it's much better than pop culture. Trust me, it's the best. It's the greatest, it's fantastic. There's nothing better. I made the best decision, it's good. What's not good though is my Donald Trump impersonation. I'm just really bad at impersonations, just in general. Now I added some little lights on the sides of these track to make it seem like the track belongs a bit more than it does. I wanted to make it kind of feel like you're kind of directing the coaster along its path. And I also really liked this wall after I added the lights. I wasn't a big fan of it until I added this pattern of 
light arms that stuck out. It really just... I don't know why I like it so much. Sometimes you just like things and you don't have an explanation, and this is just one of those situations. I could probably think of a reason why if I really thought about it long and hard enough, but we don't have time for that. Now these floodlights, they create a ton of light, and when you set them to be a color, you can really make a room have a certain ambient feel to it. Now, these red lights are going to be our sirens when they go off, and we can trigger these lights to flash on and off whenever the coaster reaches a certain point in the track, so we're going to have these lights start flashing red every few seconds when the coaster reaches this point on the track, and have some siren sounds going off. It's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty, just pretty, really, really pretty, because think buildings about to explode are very pretty, that's the best way to describe them. So all the coasters and rides and things I make for this series, and each of them, I do my best to try to find something that I want to do that's new for that ride, to push myself to grow in a better direction, a way to challenge myself with every new ride I make. So for this ride, even though this is my first ride I made for this series, this is not the first ride I've made in the game. This is the most elaborate ride I've made in the game so far, but not, not the first ride, obviously. I didn't just like magically make this ride as my very first ride in the game ever, even though that would be pretty amazing. But my goal for this ride was to really get used to trigger events because I've done a few triggers before I made this coaster, but I hadn't made anything too elaborate. So my goal for this ride was to really just try to do as much with triggers as I could and really experiment with those and push myself to get better at those. And so that's why I put so many triggers in this coaster and you'll see them later on. You can't really see any of them in this episode except for the sirens, I believe. But there's lots of things you can trigger. I've said you can trigger lights already. But you can also trigger effects such as water, explosions, smoke. You can, uh, you can trigger uh, animatronics and different pieces of scenery. And you can also trigger sound effects. This game has lots of built-in sound effects and music that you can trigger. You can also add your own music, I believe. That is one thing I haven't actually experimented with yet, is adding your own music to amusement parks. So I'm definitely going to have to try that out because that could also lead to some new cool ideas. But like I said, I'm only kind of experimenting with one new thing for each ride I build so I don't overwhelm myself and then I might go and add some new things to old rides as I discover some more stuff out in the future. But yeah, the one thing I want you to get out of what I just said is that triggerable items are the one thing I'm focusing on on this coaster and that I really want to experiment with. And right here, we're actually making a rainbow tunnel so we can show everybody that our park is LGBT friendly. Okay, maybe that's not the real reason we did that even though our park is LGBT friendly. But the reason for this rainbow tunnel is so it sort of feels like you're going through a wormhole while you're blasting off. That's kind of what I was going for. And then later, I don't think I do it this episode, but later I have the, the rainbow kind of like flashing as you're going through the tunnel. It looks really cool. It's actually my favorite part of this whole entire coaster. So I'm very excited for you to see it. There's lots of parts that are my favorite part, but that's my all-time favorite part, I think. No? There's another thing I do outside next episode too that's really cool too. Okay, well now I'm adding the triggers for the sirens. So as you see on the track, there's these numbers. There's a one, two, three. The one is at the very beginning and that's what opens up this door. But then the two, three, four, five. Each time the coaster hits one of those numbers, I have all the sirens turn on for, I believe, one second. I don't remember the exact time, but you have an item trigger for a certain amount of time. And that's what's going on with that. And it takes a lot of time because for each number I have to select every single siren, but it's worth it and it looks really cool. Now I haven't fully decided if I want to show myself adding all these triggered items because it is pretty repetitious and there's not much to it. I'll probably just show it this episode and keep it going just so you can see like the main process. But in the future when I'm doing triggerable items, I'll probably just either cut past it and tell you what I did or fast forward through it even faster because as I said, it's just really repetitious. You can just see it on the side. It's just me clicking on a number, clicking all the items that go along with it, and then clicking on the next number, and then making sure everything's working out. But the nice thing is, it's really easy to time these events, because if something happens too soon, all you have to do is slide that little number a little bit further down the track, and it'll happen a bit later. So, it was really well done, and the way they implemented it is perfect. But yeah, this takes like a lot of memorization, just remembering which trigger affects what items. But it's, it's honestly not too hard. Almost anybody can figure it out. Also, I think I actually do start doing the flashing rainbow tunnel this episode. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of cool watching the lights turn off. So what I did for the rainbow tunnel is I had a trigger turn all the lights on at the same time. 
and then I have each light last for a certain duration. So the ones that turn off first only last for 0.2 seconds, and then each light as it goes down the line lasts for 0.1 seconds longer. So the ones closest to us last for about 1.2 seconds. So when they all turn off, they just kind of go down the line and make a sort of flashing rainbow as you go down. And it looks it looks pretty it looks pretty rad. I'm trying to think of different adjectives to explain my stuff without trying to sound too repetitious. Because I call things cool a lot, but I need to think of other words that mean cool. Some other words I can think of are neat, awesome, interesting, I don't know. I need to get a thesaurus, apparently. <laughs> Anyways, we have reached the 20 minute mark on this video, so I think I'm going to call it quits for this episode. In the next episode, we will finish this rainbow tunnel, and then we will continue decorating this coaster. We still have quite a bit to do. We still haven't even really touched the outside of this building. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Planet Coaster. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And to end this video, I'll go ahead and show you the inside of the laboratory as we ride the coaster so we can see these sirens in action. Mm -hmm.